as I reflect on the 100-year history of Providence College, my thoughts go to buildings, because the buildings tell the story of the history of Providence College. The first and founding building of Providence College is Harkins Hall. And Harkins Hall, as you probably know, was named after the first, or excuse me, after the Bishop of Providence at the time. And it was his vision, Bishop Harkins' vision, to bring the Dominicans to found Providence College. And we would not be here today if it weren't for Bishop Harkins. And so it's fitting uh, and just that we have Bishop Tobin, his successor, with us today. We are grateful to you and to your predecessors for inviting the Dominican Order to Providence and for the work that together we have done here in the hundred years. Most of the oldest buildings on campus were named after Dominican saints. Albertus Magnus, Thomas Aquinas, Raymond. There's one building on campus named after a provincial who may or may not have been a saint, I'm not sure. McDermott Hall was named after the longest serving uh, provincial in the province of St. Joseph. And we have not advanced his cause for sanctimony yet. Uh, maybe someday we will. And that's a reminder to us that this work has been the work of the province of St. Joseph. And I want to thank Father Latoyle, our provincial, for his presence today and for his support and the support of the province of St. Joseph. We would not be here except for the province of St. Joseph. Most of the other buildings named after Dominicans on campus are named after college presidents. Slavin Center that we walked through to come here, Father Slavin was the longest serving president in the history of Providence College. He ruled or reigned or presided, whatever the term was, for a 14-year period after World War II. And we stand in the state, in the in the wake of what he accomplished as the president of Providence College. We are converting the former Dorr Hall, who succeeded Father Slavin, into the new business school building. Father Dorr served as president, I believe, for four or five years after Father Slavin. I don't want to forget Bill Haas, who was president in the late 1960s, a very difficult period at Providence College. He could not be present with us today, but he presided over one of the most tumultuous times at Providence College. The war in Vietnam, and equally tumultuous, but the best thing Providence College ever did was the decision to admit women in the early 1970s. After Father, uh, excuse, then Father Haas, was Father Peterson, and we stand in the Peterson Center. And Father Peterson was president when I was a student at Providence College. And what a magnificent job he did. What a charismatic and compelling speaker he was. And this building honors someone who helped put Providence College on the map. And I think about Father Cunningham, who was president after uh, Father Peterson. I lived next door my sophomore year in Raymond Hall to Father Cunningham, and I got to know him very well. He was so funny and so smart and so holy. He was president when I was a young priest here in Cunningham Hall, right out the front door of Dominic House, is named after Father Cunningham. And I think about Father Smith. Father Smith's the one that invited me on the board of trustees at Providence College. I watched him for many years labor so wisely and so generously to build this college up. More recently, the buildings that we have on campus are named after major donors. And that marks the evolution of Providence College. We would not be here today 
if it weren't for the philanthropy of those who support Providence College. And I think about Bill and Claudia Concanon as I walk through the Concanon Fitness Center. And I think about Mike Ruain and his wife Liz as I look at the Ruain Center for the Humanities and the new Ruain Friar Development Center that we are going to build this fall. And I think of Art and Patricia Ryan, whose generosity has enabled us to build that magnificent new building that you see as you come down Huxley Avenue. The buildings tell the story of how Providence College has evolved. I'm also reminded on this centennial of everybody who's worked here, of all the people that have found their lives and their livelihood in the buildings of Providence College, of our faculty, of our staff, of our 55,000 alumni who have made Providence College the building that it is. I think about my mom who worked in the library for 25 years, my dad who came here on the GI Bill of Rights after the Second World War. These buildings have shaped the lives of generations of people who have lived and worked and taught and studied at Providence College. What Paul reminds us, however, and this is the most important point I want to make this morning, is that this campus, this college, this community over time, it's not built primarily by Harkins or McDermott or Ruane or Peterson or Cunningham or any of the great figures in the history of Providence College. Paul reminds the community at Corinth that they are God's building. The history of Providence College is the history of what God has done. And it is fitting for us as we begin our centennial to remind ourselves that this is God's work. All the good that we have accomplished here and all the good work that has gone on here is from God. And God's name is not on any building, but it's on the name of the college. We live in the providence of God. We live in the care of God. And to God belongs the glory, the praise, and the honor of this centennial. As Paul reminds the Corinthians, we are all co-workers with God. I'm God's co-worker. We are all God's co-workers. You are God's co-workers. God is building a foundation that he laid in 1917 and that he continues to lay today. And in this lies our hope for the future, that we belong to God. And God's work is what we do. And as we enter into our centennial year, that's the first and most important thing that we do here today. We thank God. We praise God. We ask for God's continual blessing on the work that we do at Providence College. This is God's building. My second point, Paul reminds the community at Corinth that God's building cannot have any divisions. He's, one of the things he's writing to them about is that they've divided themselves into factions. Some are claiming, yeah, I was Apollos' convert, and some are claiming that I am Paul's convert. And Paul is writing to say to them, you all belong to God. You don't belong to the person that first preached to you or that catechized you or any charismatic figure. And it is a constant theme of Paul's letters to the Christian communities that he helped found is that when there is division, when there is rivalry, when there is not unity, 
you're not living up to your call. In God's building, there must be unity. As Paul says, in Christ, there is no Jew or Gentile. There is no slave or free. There is no male or female. All of the things that we use to divide us from others do not come from God, and they do not come from Christ. In Christ, there can only be unity. And so the work that began here at Providence College in 1917 was meant to be a work of inclusion, of unity, and opportunity. And as we go forward into the future of Providence College, that work needs to continue because we have not yet become the building that God wants us to be. Our work of inclusion, our work of equity, our embrace of diversity is a barometer of how far we have come and how far we still need to go to be the kind of community that Paul calls all Christian communities to be, one in Christ. Final thought about buildings. I want to relate a parable that many of you have heard before, and it has lots of different versions. I went online last night to try to find out what the Ur version is, and I couldn't find it. Uh, but I found one that I thought I'd share. I haven't used this version of it before. So a person comes upon a building project, and the people that are involved with the project are building a cathedral. So he goes up to one person and says to him, what are you doing? The guy says, I'm cutting stones. Okay. He walks up to the next person. He says, what are you doing? Uh, I'm feeding my family. Okay. He walks up to a third person and says to him, what are you doing? And the guy gets up and looks at him and says, I'm building a cathedral. The bishop has a vision for this place. It's going to be a place of sanctuary, a place of refuge, a place of building community, a place to find God. And the bishop has called us here together to do this work. And I know the work won't be done in my life. And I hope my children will continue my work. What a difference it makes when you can see the big picture and understand that you are building something bigger than yourself and something that belongs to God. And so as we go forward into our future, my hope and my prayer for us as we enter our hundredth year is that everybody involved with Providence College feels like they're building a cathedral. And it's an unfinished work almost by definition. We will not finish it, I will not finish it in my lifetime. It's a work that we have received from those who have gone before us. And it's a work that we hand on to those who come after us. And as we celebrate our centennial, we remember those who founded this building that is God's cathedral. We redouble our efforts to the work that we have to do to make it God's cathedral. And we someday will hand it off to other people to continue the work of building the cathedral that is Providence College. In athletics, since we're in a gym, we talk about our house and defending our house. We don't have our house here at Providence College. We have God's house. And it's God who built it, God who is still building it, and God who will build it in the future. And our work 
is to continue the cathedral and our hope and our promise and our prayer. Our thanks be to God who does all the heavy lifting.